Hello. So we have here a Microsoft 365 tenant. We've signed up as an E5 developer and we have an active subscription. So that's all done. We did that in one of the last videos. So go and check that out. But what you'll notice here is we have a subscription that expires in this case, 26th of February next year, and it will do so every three months. Uh, it'll just automatically renew. The first couple of renewals you get, um, it will just go ahead and do, but after a certain amount of time, it's not going to renew. You're going to start getting emails saying you need to start actually using your developer tenant for development things. Otherwise, they're just not going to renew it. So you can't just use it for like email and just using Office 365 apps and, and storing a bit of data in OneDrive and the like. You've actually got to use it as a developer to be able to, to have it renewed. What I want to do here is just show you how you can do that how you can do, I've got five things that you can do with, I'm going to show you, uh, to make sure that your subscription of your E5 developer does get renewed. So the first two are pretty easy, it's just creating a site in SharePoint, and the second one is creating a team in Microsoft Teams. However, the, the next three are a little bit more involved, they are developer items, but firstly we want to publish an app in Power Apps, uh, that's the first one. We want to publish a, a power automation flow as well. And then we want to just do a, a Power BI session, just a quick one from templates. Now, these are not full-fledged apps. I'm not going to teach you how to, how to program or do anything in these particular environments. I'm just going to use the basic templates that are available to very quickly um, get through those tasks so it makes sure that your, your developer tenant is, in fact, renewed. The first one we want to do then is publish that SharePoint site. Now, there's a really nice little Microsoft add-on site called Lookbook, and you can see here, lookbook.microsoft.com. You can see all these templates that it has for you. So all I want to do here is just take one of these templates and throw it onto SharePoint and have it up and running. So what we'll do is we'll just go in here, have a look at these examples. We'll just pick any, I don't really care what it is, and we're not going to use it. We just want to show that we're using the developer tenant here. So we're just going to grab this first one, and say, okay, yep, yeah, actually that does look pretty good, so we'll add it to your tenant. Now notice as well, I am logged in, as you can see, with my uh, global admin account on the developer tenant, uh, logged in here. So it shouldn't ask me for any other credentials as I go through, it should just work. So uh, it's just a nice clean browser session to do that. So I'm going to say here, yep, this is the one we want, I want to add to your tenant, and that should if you weren't logged in, it's going to prompt you for the login, but I'm going to get to this point and you can see it's asking for this permission requested um, to do this. And we'll just say, yes, we can consent. This is on behalf of that, that template that we're going to be using and accept that. And what it should do is apply that to the SharePoint sites. So once it's ready for us, it's going to ask us quick bit of information. I'm just going to use the standard email address here. Yes, we'll call it sales. We'll have it under sites. We'll call it global sales. These are all the defaults. So we'll just go along with those and hit provision and it should go ahead and do that for us. Okay. And yep, we are good with those. And you can see there it says it would take about 15 minutes to do that provisioning. So we'll just let it do it and come back in a second when it's done. While we're waiting for that to go through, let's just go across to the team side and we'll make that team, which is really, really easy. We just go into teams, which you'll, you'll get off of the, the normal admin center there and hit manage teams. And you can see we've only got one set up, so we're gonna create a new one. We just hit add in here and we'll call this one. I mean, let's, in the guise of that SharePoint site, let's have one for the sales team. So we'll call it sales team. And um, what did you say, for the sales team, believe it or not. Uh, team owners, which will be uh, myself, just the admin, is fine, and just apply that and let that create it. Now, what we will do is we'll just chuck a couple of members in there as well, so at least it's got something. So we'll put in the standard test users that I have, just add those in too. Which we do, just going back into the team, and we'll see one member there we'll just add in and add a couple more so and we'll just put in this guy where is he let's take a second to come up maybe we don't have him in there oh there he is cover dog so we'll put cover dog and we'll put vegas dog there we go 
and apply those in. And you can see now we've got some members. So really that does satisfy the fact that we do have a team. And if we jump back just to main manage teams here, you can see, yes, we've got these two. And that's really all we need for that particular section. Just flicking back to the SharePoint screen, you can see now provisioning is complete. So let's go check that out. So if we go back into the admin center here and drop down into SharePoint, I'm hoping we should see a site for the, the global sales team here. We look at active sites and look at that sales global sales there we go all right let's go check it out see what it looks like so we just click on this one and this will take us in obviously we're going in as that global admin so it's going to look slightly different but um, from what the users would see but you can see it is a published site and everything is there ready for us to edit and mess with it and do what we want basically. We, I mean, obviously you can go in and edit and, uh, and do what you want to in terms of an actual page, but that's not really what we're after. We just want to have one actually just published on the system. So it looks like we're doing something with SharePoint. So, um, so there we go. That's, that's it. That one's done. We can now close all these extra tabs. We don't need these anymore. Let's just get rid of those one and that one come back to our subscription screen you can see that now what I want to do is have a look at the power apps and we can do that just jumping off here if we look at all apps you'll see there's our big list but these are the items we want to talk about power apps power automate and power bi so power apps is the first one so go into that it'll take us to the make.powerapps.com site and which is the base entry for power apps now, what I don't want to do here is just try and do a whole tutorial about how to create Power Apps and really what they're all about. What we want to do here is just take a template of an app and just do a real quick and dirty publish it and see it running just so we've got something running in Power Apps. As I say, the whole basis behind this whole video is to show you how to get that E5 developer renewed rather than teach you how to use Power Apps. So what we do though to do that, we just hit create and a quick and easy way is just to pick an app from a template. And you can see there's plenty of templates here. Let's pick this one here, Budget Tracker. That seems pretty good to do. So we'll call it Budget Tracker. We'll give it the name. Yes, we're going to put it for a tablet. And we'll just say Create. And that will go in and create it for us. Now when it starts, it'll take us into the Power App Studio, which is pretty cool to look around and actually do something with Power Apps. If you haven't done anything, then suggest you go and have a look. But uh, what we want to do with this one, as you can see, this is our app we've got. And I mean, you can mess with it if you want. You can change things around and play. But essentially, all we really want to do with this one is we'll just save that. And then we're just going to hit publish, which will just take that real basic core app and publish it for us. Just do that. There we go. Publish it, budget tracker, and publish that version. Now, by doing that, that will be available with the default settings to anybody in that tenant to actually go ahead and use. So I'm going to show you how to actually get to that and, and see that app in, in motion so we can prove that it is actually working on the tenant for you. So after the publisher's completed, we'll just go back and leave that. And you can see in our apps tab here, we have Budget Tracker 1747. If we go into that, You'll see there's the app running and you can see there's there's the url that you would give somebody if you want to go find that url just go in here and have a look at the details and you'll see that is the web link so give that web link to anybody in the tenant and that will work quite nicely click on that you can see there's your power app real simple so the next one is that power automation flow so we'll just come out of here go back to that little app window again and you can see there's our power automate if you don't see it in this screen then just do the all apps and then scroll down you'll find it through power automate there and jump in there which looks like that so 
what we want to do here is just again just grab one of the templates and just create something that's real quick and easy so we can just show that we're doing something in here so the one I'm going to pick is a template which is pretty easy to work with it's a template that will send an email when a message shows up in a particular team so if you need to get notified that something's going on in a particular team it will then send you a note and you can see here if you go to templates this one here send an email when a new message is added in Microsoft Teams. So we'll do that. And you can see that it's asking us to say, who are we connecting as with the team and the, the Office 365 Outlook? So we'll just use our admin account for those two, but you could use any account that you wish to set this up, obviously. And uh, we go through and create this, this automation flow. So we'll pick a team. Now, down there, we'll pick the sales team. That's the one we created earlier on and the channel ID is going to be general and we'd say who we're going to send this to so we're going to send it to let's say our little test user fast.com oh, let's just pick it out of there I could have done a uh, new message on teams channel and you can say the body will then become message from importance that's all good don't really need any of these advanced options but you could obviously set those up um, so really quite simple and let's say save and that will go ahead and save that flow for us there we are flow is ready to go recommend you test it you can i mean you can just hit the test button here and you can say manually you can say add a message to the team to trigger it there's no automatic flows in there so we would have to go and test that manually we can do that not something i really want to do in this video we know it's going to work but the point is is that as I say, this is not a tutorial around how to use Power Automator, Power Automator and these things. It's just about getting this subscription renewed. So with that in place, you can go back to home and back to where we started. But if we look at my flows, you'll see there's the, the flows that we have set up under this user account for this tenant, which is, like it says, send an email when a message appears. You might find in Power Automate going through those templates that there's some really cool stuff that really you know speaks to you and says i really want to use this so this could be a good beneficial thing to do the world of power automate and power apps and that is quite vast so um yeah go and look around have a go and go and have a good play in there it is pretty good stuff to uh, to check out so the last one we'll do is we'll close that down there go back to our little items here and we will pick out power bi now, if you've not used Power BI before, it is quite the rabbit hole in terms of going down and and uh, and seeing what you can find in here. So again, we're going to go back and do something in the create. And yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that first time we've been in here, obviously. And what are we going to do to to build something inside Power BI? Well, we're just going to go and hit create do a real basic report now obviously we don't have any data sets available because nothing in there to report on so we're just going to say manually create it and we just put in here test and just put some dummy data yes use first row as headings call it table one and auto create a report based on that really simple and you can see there generating our report and there we go, real, real quick and completely useless Power BI report. But the point is, we have one. So we hit save, we'll call this one dummy report, like that, and where we go, one Power BI usage. So really that is uh, checkbox, done. Um, I would encourage you to have a look through Power BI if you haven't been in there about everything it can do. If you look at the homepage here, you can see these sort of reports it can do. And really it takes data sources from pretty much anywhere and does some very, uh, very cool things with them. So, so yes, definitely check that out and have a look at that. But with that, we'll close that one down because we'll bring this one to a close. And about a month or so before the tenants expire is when you'll start getting the notes to say that it has been um, extended for you now it is 
important to note that you can't just leave those things in there as static items. You're going to have to every every month or so just go in, make a small change to it, tweak it, create a new one. Just you can just have a bit of a look around. You can see that it's quite easy to do. So so just create another Power BI report or another Power Automate workflow. You may even decide to start using them in the tenant. So then of course it it, it ticks that box for you automatically. But the key thing is do those things. This will automatically renew and you will have your 25 licenses of E5 available for you, completely live tenant with everything that E5 can offer, no restrictions at all um, in forever, basically, uh, until uh, until you don't uh, use the developer tenant anymore and they decide to uh, expire it for you. But anyway, I hope that was useful. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for doing that. And I will see you next time. Thank you.